do 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 is death reversible? That's kind of cool. Hi, James from Ingvid, and welcome future native language speakers. Mr. E is wearing a wig, and he's got the sign eight slang phrases. Let's go to the board and take a look what's going on. So he's wearing a wig, and he wants me to read this story to you. But before I start, I'm going to explain what this is about. What we're going to do today is we're going to learn eight slang phrases you probably hear on the news, on romantic comedies, or on police shows. Um, primarily, I want you to be able to become aware of what these are so you can understand them from their context and the meaning of them. And if you're a new, uh, a new language learner, a new native speaker, or trying to be, um, you may not want to use these, but they'll be very useful to you to understand what's being said because these are common phrases that North American speakers use. All right. So we're going to go to the board, look at these eight phrases. Why is this good? Well, this is going to make your television viewing a lot better when you watch romantic comedies or the news. It'll also help you on the streets when you hear people just say these things casually. You'll go, okay, I know what they're talking about. And as you get better in English, you might want to start using some of these. Cool? All right. Let's get started. Let's not hold you back from your learning lesson. So, Story, E, you want me to read this? Okay, and you're going to explain why you're wearing a wig. It seems he's doing it to show the crazy woman. I don't know, let's just read it. So, one day when Mr. E was walking down the street, a beautiful woman came up to him, out of the blue, and made a pass at him. Oh, that's interesting. Out of the blue made a pass. Okay, seems we're supposed to pay attention to these things in the blue. Okay, Mr. E thought she was tripping because she said he was the best looking worm she had ever seen. Okay. So Mr. E thought she was up to something because she was a nervous wreck. It turns out she was a crook. She demanded Mr. E's wallet saying, hand it over. Mr. E thought he was a goner, so he handed it over and ran away. Dun 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 dun, the end. Well, the story seems like he's a bit of a coward, a chicken, walk, 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 but, Let's go to the board and take a look at what he's trying to get to us. So the wig is because of the woman, right, E? Okay, got it. That's not your real hair. You're not going to be going to become Mrs. E or anything like that. The first one we have is out of the blue. Okay, that's a, and that is a phrase, an idiom. And what it means is, think of the sky. Blue sky, if something fell from a blue sky onto your head, ow, that would be out of the blue. And it means from nowhere. Unexpectedly, you could say it happened unexpectedly. So something out of the blue is something that happens unexpectedly. The guy gave me a million dollars out of the blue. I didn't expect this. It was unexpectedly. Next, made a pass at him. So she came out unexpectedly, first one, and made a pass at him. Well, if you play football, and I mean the American kind, you know what I'm saying? Where you throw the ball like this, it's called a pass. So you pass the ball by throwing it. You threw a pass to someone. And if you play the European sport of football, then it will be a kick. And you kick the ball, you pass it to your opponent, or pass it to a player who scores the ball. And it means to throw something at someone. But that's not what it means here. If someone makes a pass at you, it means they are flirty with you. They're like, hey, how are you? Wow, wow. Flirting. And if they make a heavy pass, they could be strongly flirting at you, okay? Okay, so made a pass at him. Mr. E thought she was tripping. Now this is strange because we have an apostrophe and I don't know why we have it. Actually, I do. When you have an apostrophe, it means something's missing. Now, usually there's an English word and it's called tripping and it has a G on it, okay? And that G indicates like <clears throat> about to fall over because of something. This is different because it is slang. So when you see that, it's a different message. Tripping in this case, means not in your right mind or mentally ill. It also can mean not cigarettes. Okay, <laughs> if you're a little older, you know what I mean. Some people can be tripping because they're using narcotics and it's not alcohol. So she's tripping, she is mentally ill. So he thought she was mentally ill. That's a kind of a serious thing, right? especially because she said he was good looking or something and flirting. Now, why was she doing this? He said because she, he was the best looking worm she had ever seen. 
he has issues, self, self-confidence issues. He's a good-looking guy, look at him. <laughs> but clearly he didn't think he was the best-looking worm that she had ever seen. He thought she was up to something. Now, when somebody is up to something, we think they're doing something suspicious or something that's not good or right. So if I think you're up to something, I think you're doing something that's not good. I'm suspicious. I'm questioning you. Okay? So because she thought he was the best looking worm, he thought she must be up to something. Next, she was also a nervous wreck. Okay, well that helps. Just because someone gives you a compliment doesn't mean you're crazy. But if you're also nervous and you're saying, you're the best looking worm I've ever seen, I would think something's not right, quite right here. So a nervous wreck is when somebody's very anxious, a little nervous, too much. Nervous wreck, okay? It turned out, or it turns out, she was a crook. Well, a crook, when we say a crook, if something's crooked, it's not straight. And not straight means criminal. So she was a criminal. Dun, 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 dun. So this complimenting woman was really a criminal. She demanded Mr. E's wallet, saying, hand it over. Now, this is my hand. And just, just pretend this is a table. When you hand something over, it means to give. Give it to someone else on the other side. So if I say I hand over the, the water, give it to me. But in this case, she was a crook and she demanded, see, she didn't ask, to hand it over, to take out his wallet and give it to her. I don't think I got a wallet. I'm kind of poor. Let me see. There. Cha-ching! I got his wallet. So hand it over, that means give it to her, but she demanded, so it's not polite. If someone says to you, hand it over, it's not usually asking you in a polite way. Okay? So don't use it and think it's okay, like hand over the cookies, hand over the milk. It's usually asking someone in an aggressive way to give it to you. And finally, he thought he was a goner. Well, that makes sense. If someone's a nervous wreck, they're a little bit too nervous and anxious, you find out they're a criminal, and then they say, give me your wallet, you probably think they have a gun. And if they have a gun, you probably think they're going to kill you. If somebody says, I thought I was a goner, it means they thought they were going to die or something bad was going to happen. So if somebody has a heart attack, I go, oh, I thought I was a goner. I actually thought I was going to go away to heaven. Ah, being a goner. Okay. And then he said he ran away because he's such a brave guy. Yeah, my hero. <laughs> and he said, the end. So we don't even know. We know he gave away his wallet and he ran away. But at least now we understand this story that we started with, with many, actually we have eight um, idioms that you may not have known or phrases. And now we have an opportunity to go back and see how well you've learned them because I've explained them to you. And when we come back from the board, I'm going to erase all of our phrases and I want you to try and tell me what should be in here in place, what would be the regular English. And then this way you'll have one, the visual of slang, and two, how it turns into normal language and how you can probably use it in your own life. Cool? Are you ready? Well, let's come back to the board. And we're back. And as I said, oh, I've got the wrong marker. I want to use black. We did the slang terms and I want to make quick mention of something. Slang is cool and it's good for you to understand because a lot of times, what, what is slang? It's shortened language. Uh, people use it because it communicates an idea faster than saying the whole sentence. Uh, and it's kind of cool, <laughs> better than being so professional all the time. But please keep in mind when we say things like tripping, right? I gave you the example, tripping can be on drugs. You wouldn't say if somebody was actually really mentally ill, uh, they're tripping, or there's another one I'm going to show you later on. In when I say polite company, if, something, if someone's mentally ill, you say they are mentally ill, they're depressed or something else. Uh, people may say this though, and this is why I'm teaching this to you, if you're in a bar situation or they might say it on a television program. And just because they're saying it doesn't mean you should, I'm going to say emulate, but which means copy it. So keep that in mind. It's for you to know. So when you're watching TV programs or people are speaking to you, you know what they're saying. But context is very important. If someone's saying it to you in the bar, it doesn't mean you should say, hey, her, her uh, brother's tripping in a mental hospital or he's not. Well, the other one I'll teach you shortly. 
but it's, when they say it to you, you can kind of go, I understand. I'm not going to repeat that, but I understand. Cool? All right, so my public safety uh, announcement is done, my PSA. Let's go to the board and see how well you learned what I taught you earlier on. <clears throat> Let's start over here. Mr. E, okay, so one day Mr. E was walking down the street. A beautiful woman came up to him, and what was out of the blue? So what does out of the blue mean? That's the key. Unexpectedly. He didn't know what was going to happen. It wasn't planned. So it was unexpectedly. So another word for out of the blue is unexpected. And what happened? Oops, sorry. <laughs> I'm writing the, the answer. She made a pass at him. She made a pass at him. What's another word for making a pass at someone or another phrase? Uh, was flirtatious, but I'm saying very flirty. <clears throat> she was very flirty with him. That means she was like, oh my gosh, ooh, oh, you're so amazing. You're so great. So when someone flirts with you, which is the verb, right? It means they say you're very attractive and they're very, very, mm, I don't know, what's the word? They want to show their interest in you. Mr. E thought she was what? Now this is what I was explaining at the beginning of the lesson or this segment of the lesson. Right? We said, oops, tripping. And tripping in this case was mentally ill. <clears throat> so I'll go over that once more. If someone's mentally ill, in a non-slang way, say they are mentally ill. If they have psychosis, so they have to have a psychiatric treatment or see doctors, call them mentally ill. Um, and I told you another thing for tripping was for drugs. If someone's on Ill illegal or illicit drugs, or they could be on legal drugs, but they have too many, they could be tripping, meaning they're not in their right mind at this time. And tripping can also be angry. Are you tripping? Are you crazy? Crazy and angry in that way. Okay. So he thought she was mentally ill because she came out of, under the, out of the blue unexpectedly. She was very flirty from nowhere. So he's going, okay, I think you're mentally ill. <clears throat> Okay, so she see the best because she said she was the best looking worm she had ever seen. So Mr. E thought she was up was what? What was up to something? What's another thing? Okay. For up to something is doing something suspicious. So I'm just gonna write this over here. Because I don't have any room. Suspicious. She was very suspicious. So let me clean that up a little bit more because I want you to be able to read what I write. She was doing something suspicious. Okay, and that's something that you don't really trust. Okay, something's wrong with what's going on. You're suspicious because she was what? A nervous wreck, right? And if she was a nervous wreck, what does that mean? Now, what is very anxious? Because some of you people, even though I gave you nervous wreck for slang, very anxious might also make you very anxious. <clears throat> when you're anxious, it means you're nervous. Nervous is okay. You get nervous probably when you're trying to speak English to people, right? You're there, oh, will I remember the words? Will I get the order right? Is the grammar correct? I get it. I get nervous doing videos sometimes. When you're a nervous wreck, it's different. Because when you're nervous, you can still function. You can do something. I may be nervous now, but I can still teach this lesson. If I'm a nervous wreck, I'll be like, <laughs> and I won't be able to perform or do anything. And if you're a nervous wreck, you won't be able to do anything. So when you're very anxious or too anxious, you can be a nervous wreck. Cool? All right. Now, because she was anxious, you know, she was too nervous and she was too nice. Those two things don't go together. Like, why are you so nervous and being so nice? A little bit makes sense. Too much is not good. Because it turns out she was a, we said crook. And I said crook is not straight. So you have something that's straight and when it's bent, it's a crook. And I should have explained in English, if someone's a straight arrow, it means they do the right thing. So when we say someone's straight, they do the right thing or they're not 
gay or homosexual. That's what straight means. So when something's bent, it means it's not what we expect and not normal. All right? So in this case, she was a crook, and another word for crook in this case is what? It is a criminal. And we all know what criminals are, someone who breaks the law. Right? Next. She demanded Mr. E's wallet saying, what did we say? Hand it over, right? Hand it over. <clears throat> Once again, I explained what it means, so I'm going to give you a second to think about it. That's right. Now, I have to explain something because what I am going to write is not exactly the same. They have similar meanings, but if somebody says hand it over, usually it's not polite. Right? It's usually more of a demanding form. If someone says give it to me or you can give it to me, it's much more casual. Right? Oh, you got a new watch? Give it to me. Let me take a look at it. You can say hand it over, but usually hand it over in this case is a bit stronger. Right? Hand it over. It's not as polite as can I have it or can I look at it or can you give it to me? So I'm saying that to you in case you think, oh, hand it over, give it to me or equal. If you say hand it over, people will think you're being a little bit rude. All right? But it is slang and you should know what it means because it means they actually want it and they want you to give it to them probably now. <clears throat> okay, he thought he was something so he handed it over right away. Now if you remember what I said, if hand it over is strong and it's a criminal telling you to hand something over, what do you think is probably going to happen with your life? Hmm? Yeah, you might think you're a... He thought he was a dead man. It doesn't mean dead man. It could be a dead woman. Anything that you think, if you think you're going to die and you're a woman, you can say, I thought I was a goner. If you're a guy, you could say, I thought I was a goner. If your dog is sick and you said, I couldn't get into the hospital, I thought he was a goner. It means I think they're going to lose their life. Okay? So it's not losing a race or a game. So don't think if you play a soccer, you're like, well, I thought we were goners. It's like, no, they weren't going to shoot all of you if you lost the game. But if you feel that you're a goner, it means you feel that your life will probably be over. In any situation, right? From a car accident, heart attack, operation. You could be a goner if there's not a good doctor, right? Cool. So now that we've done this and you've gone over it, that were eight though those were eight different phrases or idioms, right? And as I said, most of these you're gonna find will be in movies, romantic comedies, or people will say them on the street, right? Um, so I don't expect you to use them as per se. So in every conversation, but I want you to be aware of them so you can understand the things that you hear around you a little bit better. And as you get better, then you can use them every once in a while. Now, as always, I have a bonus for you. So what I did was I picked four of the ones that are most commonly said that you will most commonly hear, and I gave you more slang, but similar. So in this case, out of the blue, as I said, if you can remember out of the blue, think blue sky, something falling down. If you come out of nowhere, Imagine if you are sitting there at the screen watching right now and I go, boo, I came out of nowhere because for you, there was nothing there and suddenly I was there. So these two are very similar. He came out of nowhere, the car, I was driving and the car came out of nowhere. I didn't see it, it just, just appeared. Tripping, I was explaining to you that and I'll just put this one, remember, if someone is seriously mentally ill, please don't use this, it's not funny. Um, you can use it for, and, and people will, and it's not that they're bad people. They might say, my boss was, okay, in this case, not playing with a full deck. You could be mentally ill because when you have cards, there are 52 cards. And if you only have 49, it's not a full deck. It means everything's not there. That's one thing for talking at a bar or talking <clears throat> or listening to it on television. It's another thing to go out in public and casually say it. So be careful with this. Know what someone means. I suggest you don't use it in public. So another word for tripping, and this isn't, this isn't drugs. In this case, somebody is mentally ill or you think they're crazy, right? And I say boss because most of us think our bosses are not playing with a full deck because they make suggestions and you're like, that's just kind of crazy. You don't literally think they're crazy, but you think that idea might be crazy. And if they're tripping, you think they've got bad ideas and maybe they're crazy. Make a pass at someone, you can also say hit on someone. And I don't mean punch, <laughs> all right? So it's not a case where someone's punching you in the face, you go, oh, he hit on me. 
That is when you call the police. No. Hitting on someone is similar to making that pass in sports. You make contact. Because when you hit on someone, you make contact with them. Not touching, but you come up close to them. And or you try to bring yourselves closer together with comments, right? So you can hit on someone over Zoom or Facebook. So you don't have to be literally in the same room, but it would be you make comments that they know that you are interested in. So we can say make a pass at somebody or hit on them. Nervous wreck. This is why I explain this one again when you are so nervous you can't do anything because when you're falling apart, and this can lead to someone being really mentally ill, when they're falling apart that they can no longer function. This will happen with divorce, death, loss of job and income, or loss of place to live. So they're falling apart. It means, oh sorry, and any serious relationship, so it doesn't have to be just marriage. It means their whole world is falling apart and they don't know what to do, so they end up doing nothing. So if your girlfriend says, my world is falling apart because you left me, she's saying, I can't do anything. I just want to stay in bed maybe and eat ice cream. Or it could be a guy saying the same thing and I can't get out of bed anymore. They're, they could be depressed. All right? So when you hear these things, take them seriously. All right? So now we've done the lesson. Of course, I have to give you homework. And what I want you to do for your homework is this story is a shortened version of this story. But this story has all of the explanations. I want you to do it again, but put the slang in. Now for each one, and there are one, two, three, four, you can get 250 points for each correct answer you get. Fill it in the comment section below, whether it be on Ingvid or on YouTube or wherever you're watching this, and give it a thumbs up if they get the answer right. So some lucky viewers will get 1,000 points, which is pretty cool. It means you've learned your lesson. And don't forget, I want you to go to Ingvid. And where's that? www.ing, as in English, vid, as in video.com, where there will be a quiz for 10 more and other lessons that I've done on vocabulary, grammar, conversation, listening, and whatnot. And before I go, I've got a quote for you. <clears throat> it has to do with slang. Uh, I didn't catch the uh, person's name who did the quote, so in future I'll tell you who so you can check it out for yourself. But because this lesson was on slang, the quote goes like this. Slang is a poor man's poetry. I want you to think about that. Because what we do is we take language, we shorten it to give an idea, just as poems are used to convey great big ideas, beauty and wonder, but in a short, you know, short paragraph. And it gets so much that it can affect our hearts. Slang is to affect your mind, right? And as I said, future, future native language speakers, that's our job here and that's your job. Do your homework and I'll see you soon.